Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Orlando, Florida, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Great Detectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net and you can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month at patreon.greatdetectives.net And I want to go ahead and welcome Karen as our latest Patreon supporter at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Karen. Now, I will say that I am in Orlando for PodFest, which is a fantastic gathering of podcasters. I'll talk a little bit more about the trip after today's episode. It's an episode of The Falcon, the original air date, September the 10th, 1950, and the title is The Case of the Worried Champion. Hello? Yes, this is The Falcon speaking. Oh, Kathy. Thanks for calling, Angel. I can't make it tonight. Have to see a girl about a prize fighter. He was asked to throw a fight, and it looks like he has a choice of being knocked out or knocked off. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Worried Champion. champion. It's Sunday in New York, and this particular Sunday happens to be the birthday of boxing champion Tommy Foster. So Foster's manager, Luke Whitney, is throwing a big celebration at the River Steakhouse, and a good time is being had by all, when suddenly Foster's jaw tightens and he scowls as he stares across the room. Whitney notices. Oh, what's the matter, kid? Look who just came in. Oh. Well, what do you know, Steve Cortez? It was in the paper you having the party for me here. That's why he came. Oh, what? Don't let it get you. I know what he's trying, Whitney. He wants to get my ghost. So you don't let him. You laugh it off. Burns me up. The way he's been yapping in the papers about... Part of the game, kid. You should know that by now. Well, he didn't have to come here. Look, if you're going to let him get you like this... Hey, here he comes. Over to this table. All right, just sit tight. Let me do the talking. Save the fireworks for the ring. Well, if this isn't a coincidence. Is it, Cortez? I suppose you didn't know Whitney was having a birthday party for me here tonight? No kidding, champ. Well, happy birthday to you. If I'd known, I'd have brought a cake. Why don't you sit down, Cortez? Join the party. Well, thanks, Whitney, but I don't think the champ would like it. To keep reminding him what's in store for him. Now, look, if you think I'm afraid of you, Cortez... Now, where would I get an idea like that? Just because you've been dodging me for two years? I wasn't dodging. I... Just because the only reason you finally agreed to meet me was the commission threatening to suspend you if you didn't? That's a lie. Oh, Foster. Never mind, Whitney. I'll quit riding for you. I see he's the excitable type. So I won't upset him anymore. Until we get in the ring. Oh, yeah? <laughs> now, that's what I call a bright remark. I'll show you who's bright. Get on, will you? You think I'm a scary? Stop it, Foster. Don't be a trouble. Let go with me. I'm not taking any more of his life. All right, Cortez. You've been asking for a try this on, but stop. Stop. 
Well, Whitney, there's your champ. If him and me are going to meet in the ring, you better start picking up the pieces. All right, Cortez, you're on good form. You can lay off the bag for a while. How are you, Rich? You disappointed me, son. You disappointed me badly. Yeah, how? The little fracas with Foster the other night. He started it? Of course he wasn't goaded into it, Cortez. You wouldn't dream of needling him. He's punchy. He blows his top easy. Do you know something, son? What? I had 75000 invested in you to take Foster, and then this ridiculous incident most disappointed. How do you figure that? I flattened him in ten seconds. Looks to me like the investor's smart. Where's the disappointment? The odds, son, the odds. You've jumped to a one-to-five favorite. No percentage in backing you at that figure. He'll still win. I always insist on a better return for my I'm money. I'm sorry, Rich, but Foster asked for it. I didn't come here to quibble about the details. Now, why did you come here? You see, Cortez, it's like this. Considering the shift in odds, I'm forced to back Foster now instead of you. You understand? All right, it's your dough if you want to throw it away. You don't understand. I have no intentions of throwing it away. So what do you want me to do? Have I asked you to do anything? I'm beginning to get the idea without you asking. Good. I counted on your good sense. Go chase yourself. I just wanted you to know I'm not the only one betting on Foster. And if you whip him, well, somebody will resent it. I thought I should tip you off, son. I always like to do the friendly thing. Well, thanks so much. Now get out of here. And not so fast. I might be asked your attitude in this matter. If I am, what answer do I give? Oh, you, uh... You want an answer, huh, Rich? Yes. All right. Here it is in a nutshell. So you slugged, Rich? Yeah. For a fellow who makes his living by fighting, it seems to me you're giving away an awful lot of free samples. They asked for it. Even so. Rich wanted me to take a dive. I don't go for that. Going to report him to the boxing commission? I can take care of myself. I don't need the commission. But I thought you're supposed to report any gambler who asks you to throw a fight. Look, leave me handle it my way, will you? Sure, Steve, sure. <laughs> you sure are touchy lately. I got things on my mind. What things? Don't tell me the fight's bothering you. Of course, they don't make me laugh. Then what is it? It's nothing. But you just Look, said... what are you, a detective or something? No, Steve, I'm just trying All the to... time, you got to act suspicious. Well, I wasn't suspicious, but now I'm beginning to wonder. Oh, now you're beginning to wonder. Yes, I am. Come to think of it, you broke three dates with me last week. I told you, training. Got to get to bed early. If one of the nights was the night you had that fight with Foster. You break a date with me and wind up in a nightclub? Not a nightclub. It's a restaurant. That's all. I got to eat, don't I? Act like I never take you nowhere. You're beginning to act like maybe you don't want to. What's the matter? Is somebody else? It don't mean anything. Just a couple of dates. Oh, then there is something. I don't get any ideas. It's you getting ideas I'm worried about. I told you, it don't mean anything. It's you and me, baby. You know that. Yeah, you and me and how many others? Yeah. Tommy Foster. Yeah. Well, come in, champ. Thanks. You, uh, you're Mike Waring, ain't you, detective? Mm hmm. They call you the Falcon. You're supposed to be good. Well, they call you the champ. You're supposed to be good, too, but Cortez flattened you. I didn't come here to get ribbed, Waring. Why did you come here? I just heard Don Rich called on Cortez the other day. The gambler? The gambler. He asked Cortez to throw the fight. Where'd you hear this? From Margo Marino. She's Cortez's girl. Only they had a fight. And she says rich proposition, Cortez? Yeah. Well? Well, I want you to check, see if she's on level. Why? Well, Cortez should have reported rich to the commission, and he didn't. So if Margo was shooting straight, Cortez could get himself suspended. You mean you could get him suspended? What's the matter? You afraid to meet him? Why, you... No, no, no. Careful, Foster. Slugging me is no way to get me to work for you. Everybody thinks I'm a scared of Cortez. Look, I want to meet him, you understand? I've been ready right along, only Whitney wouldn't sign me up. Whitney's your manager? Yeah. So Whitney's a scared of Cortez. He said Cortez wouldn't draw flies. Well, maybe you will after Cortez gets through with you. Funny man, I ought to... Now, look, look, you came here to get me to help you out of the fight with Cortez. You can't expect my overwhelming admiration. You've got it wrong. I just want a fair fight. 
When I lick him, I don't want nobody saying that he took a dive. That's not the way you put it before. Well, that's the way I meant it before. Now, you, you're going to take the job, or ain't you? You want me to check with Cortez's girl, find out if she was telling the truth about Rich? Huh? Yes. Well, why not just report what she said to the commission and let them investigate? Well, I don't want to stick my neck out if she's lying. Mm-hmm. What's the girl look like? Oh, really? Yeah. All right, Foster. I'll take the job. <laughs> Yes? Margot Marino. That's right. Mm. Foster was right. Got what? I don't get it. Angel, you've got it. Look, who are you? What's the Mike I... Waring, the name? Yes, Mr. Waring. Why not call me Mike, huh? I haven't made up my mind what I'm going to call you yet, but I'm getting ideas. Now, what do you want? In. Not so fast. Oh, sure, so fast. Hey! Well, this could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship, Angel. So, uh, let's get started, huh? Shall I close the door? I'm warning you, I've got good lungs. You won't need them. I'm here on business. Oh, what business? Why did you tell Foster that Don Rich tried to buy off Steve Cortez? Because it happens to be true. You and Cortez had a falling out, didn't you? Suppose we did. Couldn't it be you're just trying to put him on a spot to get even? Could be, but it's not. Can you prove it? If I had to. What's it to you? Well, you've made a serious charge. I can back it up. I still want to know why you're interested. Who told you what I said? Tommy Foster. Oh. Who are you, a reporter? Not exactly. Then... Say, wait a minute. I'm waiting. You work for Don Rich? <laughs> How'd you guess? Why'd he send you here? To threaten me? Find me off? Well, as a matter of fact, I... Just a minute. Hello? Oh, it's you, Steve. No, I haven't changed my mind. Now, look, lover boy, if you want to play the field, just don't expect me... Steve! What happened? Steve! What's the matter? I don't know. He was talking to me, and then all of a sudden I heard a noise. It's like a shot. A shot? Yes. Steve gasped, and then he wasn't talking to me anymore. Well, we'd better get to him right away and see what Steve has to say about it, if anything. Adventures of the Falcon. A minute has passed since a phone call from Steve Cortez to Margot was interrupted by what Margot said sounded like a shot. Now Margot and Mike Waring have rushed down to the street to look for a taxi to take them to Cortez. There's a cab. Taxi! Taxi! Come on, Margot. All right. All right, Angel, get it. Hey, driver, where'd she go? Right there she is, mister, running across the street. Margot! Hey, come back here! Oh, the crazy... Margo, look out! Brother, was that close? Yeah, just missed. Well, there's no use my following. I might not have her luck in traffic. <laughs> you must be some wolf to make a risk a neck like that. Oh, you got it wrong, driver. You know, come she scrams like that. I'm not sure, but I don't think what scares her is a fate worse than death. You, you don't? No, what I think scares her is death. All right, driver, let's go. Sergeant Corbett, Mike Waring. I hate to disturb your canasta, old boy, but I found a stiff in room 308 at the Hotel Aldrich. Look into it, will you? Now that I've confirmed the murder, I can't hang around here. I have something more important on my mind. <laughs> no, not blonde. Brunette. So long, Corbett. Come in. Thanks, Foster. Well, any luck, Waring? Yeah, lots of luck. You're not going to have to fight Cortez. Oh, you mean he's suspended? I mean he's dead. Eh? Huh? Murdered. Holy smoke. Who done it? Foster, you just had a mouthful. Hey, me and him had that row the other night. You think anybody get the idea that yeah, I... probably. You got to help? That's my business. Okay. You got yourself another job. Right. 
Did I hear somebody say Cortez was murdered? Yeah, Whitney. Where is my manager, Luke Whitney? Hello, Whitney. Hello. Oh. Oh, what's this about Cortez? Was he really... Yeah, really and truly. Champ, do you realize what this means? What does it mean? There goes our gate. We were sure of a sellout. No question about it. But now... I uh, thought you said Cortez wouldn't draw flies, Whitney. When did I say that? Well, you said it. Oh, oh, you mean last year, champ. Sure, but now things are different. Cortez has a rep. We'd have cleaned up a sellout, no question. In fact, you might have had a double sellout. Huh? Mm-hmm. Sellout at the gate, and maybe Cortez would have sold out in the ring. That's why uh, you hired me, wasn't it, Foster? Yeah, well, was was that Marino Dame on the level? So it would seem. Hey, then, that's the way it ties up. Rich Dick is with Cortez. Cortez gives him the air, so Rich knocks off Cortez. No, 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 no. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Foster. Right now, I'm interested in the girl. Do you think she killed Cortez? Hardly, Whitney. She was with me when it happened. Oh, well, then why bother with her? Because she's making with an off-beat routine. First of all, Foster, how come she told you about Cortez and Rich? Oh, her and Cortez had a row. She wanted to give him the business. She could have gone to the commission. Well, she didn't know none of the commissioners, but she knew me. Uh-huh. And she figured I'd take it from there. I see. You know where I can find her? I know her address. Yeah, she's not there. Have any idea where she'd go to hide out? Hide out? Who's the girl hiding out from, Warren? From me, Whitney. You? Yeah, and if this is the kind of results I get, I'm going to ask Dale Carnegie for my money back. <laughs> How do you do, sir? Hello, I'm Mike Waring. I'm looking for Don Rich. Mike Waring, I've been half expecting you. Come in, sir. Come in. Thank you. I take it you're rich. That's right. How come you were expecting me? And before we go any further, a conversation like this can never get anywhere unless one of the participants has the initiative. Therefore, allow me. Uh, all right, Rich. The gun gives you the initiative. Now what? Now you raise your hand above your head. That's it. And now we walk into the living room. Go ahead. Walk into my parlor. You may sit in that easy chair. Thank you. And if you like, you may put your hands down, one on each arm of the chair. As long as you keep them just like that, there'll be no trouble. Comfortable? With that heater pointed at my middle? (laughs) Sure, I feel fine. It's necessary for the moment. I understand you're working for me. Oh, you found Margot. Where is she? Look, son. son. I drew this revolver so that I should do the interrogating. I want to know why you said you were in my employ. I didn't. You just admitted it. The girl said so. It was her idea. What's your connection with her? I've just been wondering the same thing about you. But I have the gun. Oh, I haven't forgotten. Then answer my question and don't move your hands. All right, all right. I won't move my hands. How about my feet? Oh! No, I'll take that gun. No! Yes! There we are. All right, son, you win. Oh, don't look so grim, Rich. Don't tell me you didn't get a big kick out of it. I'm in no mood for humor. All right, as long as you're still in the mood for conversation. Only this time I have the initiative. What do you want to know? Your tie-up with Margot. There isn't any tie-up. She ran out on me. She blabbed to you. Because she thought you were working for me. Well, what's that got to do with it? Why not ask her? Where can I find her? At her apartment, probably. Well, that's the last place. She knows I might look there. She doesn't care anymore. How do you know? She was afraid of me. She thought you were employed by me. Now that that misunderstanding has been cleared up... She's not afraid of me anymore. How about you? Not afraid of me either. I made it clear she had no reason to be. But why was she in the first place? Because of the way you acted. Oh, no, 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 no. There was something else. I think not. I think so. Well, ask her. I intend to. So long, son. <laughs> Hello, Margo. Oh. oh, you, Mr. Waring. Mike. Well, still in a soup course, huh? I'll join you. I uh, was up at your place. The man at the desk said you'd be here. Mm-hmm. That'll pass him a nut sack on next Christmas. <laughs> I thought you straightened things out with Rich. Not with you. Why did you say you work for him? I didn't. You did. Who do you work for? Freeland. Then what did you want with me? I told you, checking the yarn about Rich and Cortez. Suppose I tell you I was just lying. Steve and I had a fight and I wanted to make trouble. Look, it was a fool thing to do, but I was upset. Mm-hmm. How much did Rich pay you? What? To get you to switch your story. Nothing. You know, Angel, if you build up that fight between you and Cortez, you're just strengthening your motive for the murder. What of it? Well, you wouldn't want people to get the idea you killed Steve, would you? I couldn't have killed him. 
I was with you at the time. Oh, yes, that's right. Why do you say it like that? Like what? Sarcastic. I was with you. So you were. Well, then? I'm afraid I'll have to skip dinner with you after all, Angel. There are a couple of points I want to check. I'll be seeing you. Don't count on it, Mr. Waring. Uh, just a minute. Uh, Champ, for you. Who is it? Mike Waring. Oh, yeah. Hello, Waring. Listen, Foster. I've just about got the case wrapped up. Yeah? You mean you know who killed Cortez? I think so. Well, that's great. Uh, who is it? I have to iron out a couple of details first. Maybe you can help me. Can you come over to my place? Well, I, I got to see a guy at the Hotel Randolph in a little while. Couldn't you meet me there? We'll, we'll talk in the lobby, huh? Okay, Foster. 20 minutes? That's good for me. 20 minutes it is. So long, Waring. Okay, mister, here you are. Hotel Randolph. All right, driver. Thank you. Say, can you change... Oh, hey. Mister, are you all right? Mister! Oh, no, not you. Well, that's funny. I could have sworn it is. I read in the paper you were shot. In the leg. It's not fatal. Oh, too bad. I'm coming in. No, you're not. Now, look, I'm in no condition to argue about it. But if you don't cooperate with me, you're taking a big chance. How so? Well, somebody tried to kill me. Next time, you may succeed unless I wrap this up quickly. Oh, you're breaking my heart. Well, now, don't you forget, Angel, I'm your alibi. What? Your proof that you didn't kill Cortez is that I was with you when he was murdered. But if I'm not around to I admit... I see what you mean. All right, come in. Thank you. Now, how about the truth? What truth? About you and Rich. I don't know what you mean. As soon as Cortez was murdered, you ran to Rich. I didn't. There's no use denying it. He knew about me. He said he got it from you. Well, I... I phoned him, that's all. Why? I thought you were working for him. I wanted to know what it was about. The next time I saw you, you changed your story about Rich and Cortez. How'd Rich get you to do that? He didn't. Rich didn't go up to see Steve. I lied about it. And later I decided to tell the truth, that's all. Mm -mm. You've got it backwards. Uh, If you want my help, you've got to level with me. I am. No, you're not. You're afraid. Yeah. All right, now listen. Rich won't hurt you. I'll see to that. But you're in a spot, Margo, a bad spot. And the truth is all that can help you. So now let's have it straight or I'm getting out of here and don't count on me for an alibi. All right, you win. What do you want to know? Why you switch stories. Well... When Steve was killed, I thought Rich might kill me, too. Oh, you thought Rich was the murderer? Well, naturally. So I escaped from you and and called him. I swore I wouldn't say anything about his going to see Steve if he'd only leave me alone, and he promised. You accepted his promise? Well, what else could I do? Now, come on, Margo. Where are we going? I want to wrap up this case, and I'd like you to be along. What can I do? I mean, you can hold my hand, Angel. Let's go. Adventures of the Falcon. Only a few moments have passed since a limping Mike Waring took Margot by the hand and led her out of the apartment. His goal? To wrap up the case. Now we find Mike at the local steakhouse that serves as Foster's hangout. Oh, Foster. Whitney. Oh, Waring. Yeah, Margot. Oh, sit down. Join us. Thanks, Whitney. I don't mind getting off this leg. I heard you were in the hospital. Air yeah, Foster, overnight. Well, just what happened to you, anyway? Uh, Whitney, I went over to the Hotel Randolph to keep an appointment with Foster here. When I got out of the cab, somebody was waiting for me in the alley next to the hotel. Huh? He plugged me, that's all. Well, you know who it was, Larry? Yeah, sure, Foster. Well, you mean you've seen him? No, but I know him. Who? Same person who killed Cortez. Bullet was from the same gun. But do you know who killed Cortez? I think so, Foster. Well, who? Well, you're the one who told me to go to the Hotel Randolph. Now, wait a minute. You don't hang this on me. All the time. You know, I was in a taxi on my way over when you got it. I didn't get there left after the shooting. Now, if you don't believe me, you can check with the driver of my cab. I already have. Huh? I called a taxi company and found the driver who took you over. Well, what did he say? 
You said you arrived a few minutes after the shooting, so you must have been in this cab at the time of the shooting. All right, then. Yeah, Foster, all right for you. Well, Mike, you've cleared Foster and you've cleared me. Cleared you? Well, you were with me at my place when Steve was killed. Was I? Well, of course. What are you I, uh, checked on that, too. The exact time of his death hasn't been determined. But we know the exact time, because he phoned. Well, he was on the phone when he was shot. At least you say he was on the phone. All we have is your word for it, Margo. Oh, but it's... Are you trying to say I'm lying? No. Well, you can't think I killed Steve. Oh, yes, I could. I almost did. But now that I know Whitney's the murderer, that lets you out, Margo. I? Well, you don't mean that, Wary. Well, here comes Sergeant Corbett of the police. I asked him to meet me here. So, Whitney, you'll get a chance to see just exactly what I do mean. Hello, Corbett. Why did Whitney do it, Mike? Well, they were sure Cortez could beat Foster. So when the boxing commission forced the match, Whitney killed Cortez to get rid of the threat to Foster's title. If he get rich, we'd take the rap for it. But the match was a sellout. Think of the money Whitney lost by killing Steve. Ah, peanuts compared to hanging on to the title. There'd be other matches. And Foster had a good chance of whipping anyone but Cortez. I see. Well, why did Whitney try to kill you? Because I said I had an idea who the murderer was, and Whitney thought I meant him. But well, didn't you? No, not at the time. It was his shooting at me that put me straight. How? Well, the person who shot at me was waiting in the alley next to the Hotel Randolph. That meant he knew I was going there. Uh-huh. Well, Whitney was with Foster when Foster made the appointment to meet me at the Randolph. And they were the only ones who knew. So, had to be one of them. And when the cab driver cleared Foster, that left Whitney. All right, Mike. Only one more question. What's that? You insisted on bringing me along when you nabbed Whitney. Why? I didn't help you. Well, Angel, suppose all I'd ask was for you to have dinner with me tonight. Would you have accepted? Welcome back. A basic but fairly well done case. It illustrates how quickly the Falcon will rush into danger as long as a beautiful woman is involved. All right, well, listener comments and feedback now. And we start out with uh, YouTube. Jerry writes, interesting take on the Falcon. Thanks for the upload. And then Terry says, uh, good old-fashioned detective. I love them. Thank you. Well, so glad to oblige. Thank you so much for leaving those comments on YouTube. And now, ever so briefly, I'll talk about my travel to Orlando. We got into Orlando on Wednesday night, the 24th, uh, flew in from Boise via Las Vegas. And Thursday morning, we started out at uh, PodFest. This was the 10th annual event, and really, it was amazing. It was chock full of podcasters and content creators from around the world. And really, it was the first time in the nearly 17 years that I've been podcasting that I actually connected with a group of podcasters in person. And everyone there was very nice, very welcoming. And there was such a wide variety of people there from all sorts of backgrounds, which was heartening, you know, given the way that things often seem so... This was just really refreshing and positive. And I've got some ideas for some... Things I've been trying to address with the podcast. I also met a couple of people that we may hear as guests sometime in the future. Now, I've not done a lot of touristy things here in Orlando. Thursday and Friday, I tended to spend most of the time I had energy at PodFest. And then started to feel a bit under the weather on Saturday. I'd hoped to go to SeaWorld on Sunday, but I doubt I'm going to make it. The most touristy thing that I did is I ate pizza at McDonald's. Yes, you heard that right, pizza at McDonald's. That was a bit of a thing 
briefly in the 1980s, but it persisted for many years. There actually is a podcast on the topic uh, called Whatever Happened to Pizza at McDonald's, but it did persist at a few McDonald's into the 21st century, and the one here on International Drive in Orlando is the last McDonald's to still offer pasta and pizza. It's a build-your-own uh, pizza, as well as pasta, for the price was pretty good. And it's also a really interesting building. It's billed as the world's largest McDonald's. It's got a huge arcade, a play place, which brings back memories for those of us who were kids in the 80s and 90s. And it's also got a 30-foot tall image of Ronald McDonald at the entrance. And that was my major tourism. I went there. And I went to a, a Publix, which I think is a pretty important uh, rite of passage for Anyone visiting Florida, from what I gather. I'd hope to do more. Maybe I'll do a little bit more before we head home. Hopefully on Monday. So by the time you hear this, I should have been back from Florida for about a week. Well, now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Ken. Ken has been one of our Patreon supporters since March of 2020. Currently supporting the program at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Ken. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. Be sure to rate and review the podcast wherever you download it from. We'll be back next Monday with another Adventure of the Falcon, but join us back here tomorrow for the start of another Yours Truly Johnny Dollar serial where... Well, uh, Mrs. Stone, I think you know why I'm here. Yes, of course. About that absurd thing that happened to Harvey last night. Absurd? Well, isn't it ridiculous to think that it was an attempt on his life? After all, he will go tearing around these roads at night in his sports car. Probably someone out hunting. Is that what you think, Mrs. Stone? What else could it be? Nobody has any reason to kill Harvey. Everything harmonious here at home, I suppose. Of course. How about Harvey's plans to marry Helen Barrett? Oh, yes, that. That? Mr. Dollar, say, I'm getting a little weary of that name. It's Johnny, isn't it? Yeah. And Daphne. Johnny, let me give you another tip. (laughs) You seem to be full of them. Uh, What's this one, Daphne? I wouldn't mention Harvey's fiancé to his father. Oh? Mr. Stone is quite violently opposed to the match. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.